Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're still in Stranger Things mood or mode. Again, 80s themed. I just came back from running with Mrs. Wheeler. And basically this video is drawing the Stranger Things cast in different cartoon styles, part two. If you haven't watched part one, here it is. I recommend you watch it before, but also you can watch this one first. It doesn't really matter, but to explain the dynamic, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna take a character from the show, I'm gonna pick a cartoon show, and then I'm gonna draw this character in this style. Super simple. I haven't watched volume two yet, so if there are any spoilers here, there will be about season four, volume one. So you should be good to go. Like, if you haven't watched Volume 1, like, go watch that, then come here. No, go watch that, then watch this, and then watch my other video, and then watch Volume 2. Sounds fair to me. But let's just jump right into it and get to the good stuff. All right, we're gonna start with a bang. We're gonna start with another iconic duo. On the previous video, we did Nancy and Robin together. And this time around, we're gonna do Steve and Eddie together. And for the show, I wanted to go a little bit more adult. So we're doing Rick and Morty. I must confess that I have not watched that show, but obviously I know what it is. Like, I've seen it, like, everywhere. I did my research. I tried to understand the show. There's a lot of traveling, a lot of multiverses, a lot of Ricks, and even, like, a Rick council which only left me even more confused. However, I'm confident that I can nail the show the style. No, the style of the show. I can nail the style of the show. And basically, for the style of the show, it's pretty classic Adult Swim. Very simple, and they don't really pay or respect anatomy too much, um, but that's the vibe. Here, I do like a lot the fact that the pupils are sort of like stars or asterisks, so I think we can just jump right into it and nail this one, so let's just go for it. So I think for Steve, his most defining feature would be his hair. So we're definitely gonna start with that. And then we really need to capture his facial expression, which is always like, like what the f And we're gonna give him a weapon so he can like fight all these monsters. Let's give him the baseball bat with the nails that he carried around, I think in season two. Okay, so for Eddie, his hair is also his most defining feature. So let's get that weird shaggy look. Since all of this like, upside down situation and monsters are very new to him. He spends most of the season like very scared. So let's make his expression showing a little bit of fear or concern. For the shoes, the characters in this show, they seem to have very weird like pointy shoes. So we're gonna give that to them. I'm not sure what they are, but yeah, we'll just roll with that. And then let's make sure we add some nails to this bat because otherwise, it's not gonna be as effective as it should be. And if you want a fun fact, in the actual show, when Robin's looking for all the people called Rick at the movie rental shop, one of the client's name is Rick Sanchez, which actually it's a name from this Rick here, which only means it makes even more sense. But anyway, let's just get to cleanup. So the lines are super simple. It's just like straight up thin black outlines. And we cannot forget about the star people. So let's add those in. And then for the color, it's just solid colors with no shading. And if you know me, you know that makes me very, very happy. So let's just finish up these two. All right, and I think we're done with Steve and Eddie. So now let's put them in the background of the Rick and Morty show. Here they are. I made sure to add a portal behind them because you know, this whole show it's about like traveling a lot. And these portals remind me of the gates that take you to the upside down. Here they are in this lab where one Rick, it's like containing this little weird capsule. We could literally pretend this is them infiltrating the Nina project. And now let's see them with Rick and Morty like all together. And yeah, for sure, like I think they belong in there. They're like very confused, but at the same time, like this show is like so trippy that it literally makes sense. We're done with our first two characters and we can move on to our next one, which is going to be Lucas. All right, I love Lucas. And in my opinion, they did him dirty this season because he felt a little bit forgotten. And I think that happened with also Mike and Will. Hopefully they'll have like a bigger moment to shine in volume two. But in the meantime, the show that I chose for him, it's Kids Next Door. Which, in my opinion, it's like such a great and clever show. Like, literally, like that show to me was so cool since I was a kid. And to give you some context, if you haven't watched the show, basically it's a show where a group of kids like fight evil adults with technology they create on their own like treehouse. And once you turn into a teenager, you get kicked out of the team or organization. And the way Lucas fits in this storyline in my head, it's basically he was one of them, he grew up. Now he's in high school, so he was kicked out, but then he realized he didn't like teenager world. And now he has become this sort of secret teenager spy that's an ally to the kids, 
but it's infiltrated into the adult world, if that made sense. And I think that's sort of similar to what happens with Lucas. He joins the basketball team, he becomes like popular, and then he decides that at the end of the day he wants to go back with his friends. And the style, let's look at the style of this show. This show has a very unique style in my opinion with the huge head, tiny neck, very slim limbs, but with huge hands and feet. Also everything is very lumpy and bubbly, but somehow it's not too cute. Somehow it's still like cool and edgy and badass, so great character design. And for Lucas, let's start with his very cool and geometric afro. And I want to do a mix, you know, I want to do Season 4 Lucas, but at the same time mix with a little bit of younger Lucas. So let's give him some binoculars. And also, I want to add the bandana. Let's add some of those lumps that we talked about and get the hands correct. The binoculars, I want to base them off number two's goggles. Here you can see them. Yeah, I think that will add a touch that really brings him into this world. And now it's time for cleanup. And for that, I'm gonna use this reference here, which is a promo photo. You can tell that the promo has like a cleaner and like thicker line than the actual cartoon show, but we're gonna go for this. This show as well has very simple and solid colors. There's no shading at all. I imagine he's going to be wearing his Hawkins t-shirt underneath and then his red jacket on top. And finally now, let's just color in the camo and the bandana and we're done. All right, and now let's put Lucas inside of a background. Here he is at the Kids Next Door treehouse, iconic treehouse. Here he is with our main Kids Next Door team, one, two, three, four, and five. Honestly, now I just wanna rewatch this show, and I think that's the fun part about doing these videos. It's like, I reconnect with my younger self, and I'm reminded of all the shows that I used to like. But it's fine, one day I'm gonna rewatch them, and today I'm just gonna continue drawing. So let's just move on to our next character, which is Mike. Mike Wheeler, Mr. Mike. I'm not gonna lie to you, I really struggle on choosing a show for Mike. I had this whole idea of putting him in Adventure Time and having him fall in love with Princess Bubblegum, but that style was not gonna do justice to his hair. And we need to capture his iconic hair, right? So I decided to put him in Gravity Falls. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna be quite frank. I have not watched this show. I mean, I've watched a few episodes of it, but I don't know the storyline or the plot fully. However, it's very easy to tell or to feel that the forest and the woods in Gravity Falls really has the same energy as the woods from Hawkins. So I think we can make a connection there. The style of the show is very 2010's cartoon show. Most likely these are puppets or most likely these are like animated in Toon Boom. But anyway, let's just get into it and draw Mike. So for Mike, the most iconic feature in my opinion, it's the hair. So we're definitely trying to capture that. The eyes are very simple and generic. Another thing that we have to capture is his nose, which actually reminds me, that was one of the reasons why Adventure Time didn't work. How can I do Mike without having a nose? And Adventure Time characters or humans, they don't have noses except for the Ice King, so. And then for the body, we're gonna put him in this look here. I really love the teal shirt with the great accent, so we're gonna draw him on that. And then regarding the cleanup for Gravity Falls, like I said earlier, you can tell, or I would assume this is Toon Boom, which means the lines are vectorized. And for that reason, I'm gonna use my pen tool to do the lines. To give a little explanation on what, why the pen tool, this will give me a vectorized look. Um, the lines are going to be very clean and very perfectly curved, and you can tell it's more of like a digital line instead of like a hand-drawn line made by a human. And once I do everything with a pen tool, I'm gonna rasterize it, and then I'm gonna go in with my eraser and my brush myself and manually create the tape ring that I want to get. All right, now that we have our line ready, let's add some color. That should be super simple. Again, this has no shading. Let's add that very fun and bright teal color. And lastly, you can see that Dipper and Mabel have this redness on their nose, so I wanna give that to Mike, and also add a few freckles. All right, and we're done with Mike. Now let's put him on this beautiful background that I found with that very reddish and gloomy lighting. So here's Mike on that and that really gives like Stranger Things vibe. And now let's put him with Dipper and Mabel. And now let's put him with the rest of the characters of Gravity Falls. I'm so happy that I went with Gravity Falls instead of Adventure Time because even though I'm not an expert on Gravity Falls, I think the way Mike turned out, it's my favorite one so far out of the ones we've done today. But let's see, we still have one more character to do and that's going to be Erica Sinclair. So we're gonna put Erica in the most perfect show for her that you can imagine. I'll just go ahead and say it. Basically, I chose the Proud Family 
for Erica. And that show equals SAS, and SAS equals Erica. If we do math, it makes sense. To briefly go over the Proud Family show, it's a show that I did watch when I was little. It's a show that now has a reboot on Disney Plus. A little bit more mature, it has a lot of like diversity and inclusivity. And I mean like the show itself was always very diverse. The cast itself, it's like bizarre. Like they brought in Kiki Palmer, Lizzo, Little Nas. It's just bizarre to me. I never thought something like that would be on Disney Plus or Disney. So I really want to watch it. I'm not sure where Erica fits here in this show. I don't know if she will be friends with Penny, but the only thing I'm sure of is that Erica and Dejanay would be just fighting or like arguing or like trying to obsess each other every single episode. And I'm not gonna like dissect too much the style of the show. It has more anatomy than the other ones. It's like a little bit Disney, but also very stylized. So the main thing we need to know from this show, it's literally just like sass. Look at these photos here, that's all I want to capture. So, for that, let's just start with, obviously, the head. Let's get the hips in, that's a very big feature on the show. I, again, like I keep saying, the main focus on this is to get Erica's pose and expression. The other thing I want to give her is the American flag. You know why? Because you cannot spell America without Erica. And regarding the cleanup, I decided to clean it up on the style of the reboot. We have not done a character with a lineless look before, so why not do that today? I really enjoy the textures, I really enjoy the lighting. And basically the way it's gonna go is I'm gonna clean everything with lines and then I'm gonna paint the line the same color as the inside to create that lineless look. Alright, and now let's add some color. Here's her 80s, sort of like scrunchy. And then let's add some color to the flag. Anywhere there's skin, I'm gonna have a line. And wherever there's hair or clothing, I'm gonna have no outline. All right, and now that we're done with Erica, let's put her in the background of the show. You can see her on her own, on the proud family neighborhood. And now let's see her with the rest of the cast. Yep, she blends right in, in my opinion. But I want to see one more thing which is Erica versus Dejanay. Honestly, this is like a sass overload, but who knows, actually they might end up being best friends. You never know. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite character. I know there's more characters left to do, but maybe we'll do it next year before season five comes out. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, here are my socials. If you haven't watched part one of this series, here it is. And now I need to run and go watch volume two because I have not watched volume two yet. And I will see you in the next one.